Hi everyone, it's Katie Morrow here from ESU8, and today's Wednesday webinar, originally recorded January 2016, is all about how to deliver writing instruction, and the writing process specifically, using digital tools. There is a shortened URL down here at the bottom of my first slide that has additional resources, and I will definitely put that link in the YouTube show notes so that you can access those resources even beyond today. I'm hoping to highlight um, several different tools, tips, um, and techniques for teaching writing to students using technology. And because I have so much to share in the next half hour, I would like to start with a quick overview video, basically summarizing everything that I'm going to say and share with you today in just 60 seconds. Here we go. Once upon a time, in a classroom not far away, young boys and girls learned writing, but much to their dismay. Paper and pencil, sweat and tears, struggling to learn to write, not a single language arts teacher could avoid the fight. Then I, Katie Morrow, began teaching junior high. Armed with Macs and iPads, creativity began to fly, carrying out plans of turning a new page, digital tools supporting the writing process at every stage. Pre-writing comes first, building ability to organize and brainstorm. Apps for generating ideas and concept maps become the norm. Drafting shouldn't happen until stage two. Pay Pages makes this so much easier to do. Next comes revising, critical to every young writer's craft. Speak selection is a strong way to self-check students' drafts. Editing and proofreading, formerly a dreary day. Now the built-in dictionary is just a tap away. Track changes in iCloud Drive for quality peer review. Held all together with courses on iTunes U. Blogs or iBookstore, publishing options unfurled. So many authentic ways to share our writing with the world. Sharing our published work from every possible rafter. Students as authors, writing happily ever after. What we're really searching for and reaching for, though, however, as English language arts instructors or even in content areas, is the why. Why do we teach writing instruction? What types of um, skills are we hoping our students develop, especially using technology? And it doesn't matter which grade that you look at uh, as far as the English language arts standards. You can see those connections for purpose. Um, this is just a quick reminder to check the why before you get started with any kind of technology infused writing project um, match it to a standard align it to a, a learning outcome and that'll make um, all of your efforts more purposeful and more productive so with that we're going to get started with the writing process just like the overview video introduced during pre-writing, when we're getting students excited about writing, this is a perfect time to introduce technology tools, um, especially in the form of devices or apps that allow for students to journal, to note-take, to um, put down their, their sloppy copies or their rough draft thoughts, to generate ideas and to organize them so that it does make the rest of the writing process even more productive. I'm going to show you a few iOS apps to get started. The first one is called Write About This. It's free, has a free version, but also has a paid version that unlocks even more features. You can see from the home screen here that it has a um, primary look and feel to it. Uh, whether that is something you desire or not is a matter of preference. Um, but you can look for prompts in certain categories, randomly generate writing ideas, you can save pieces of writing within the app and do quick writes. You can also create a prompt as a teacher or even the student could with um, using the iPad camera to snap an image and then put a prompt with it. Um, there's some information for parents and teachers down in the bottom left hand corner of the home screen and some nice features, especially even to check out the free version. Uh, this next one, the brainstormer used to be free and now when I went and looked it up more recently, it is does have a dollar ninety nine cost associated with it. However, this is an app that would um, even benefit you to have one copy of or on one device in the classroom. Even your personal iPhone as a teacher um, would be a way that I would use it, and then use it to generate random story starters um, for multiple students by just spinning the wheels on your iPhone. You can see that this is one of the screenshots of the app. It's not all that it has, but you spin the wheels and it randomly then matches up um, topics, plots or settings and um, different items that could be um, incorporated in the student's writing. 
This next one, Things to Think About, is also an app. It is entirely free, and what I really like about this one is that it's student-created. So a teacher with, um, within the classroom actually developed this app by having his or her students create the prompts and the original artwork. Put it together, found an app developer, put it together, and then is offering it free to any classrooms that want to uh, use it just to generate ideas or um, even think about something that they could do similar to this with, without the app or of their own model. Um, very, very, very simple. Not a lot of uh, complexity to it. Just a lot of different um, writing prompts within this free app. This next idea is a writing platform. So it's actually web-based, so you can access it from any web-enabled device. It's called writeabout.com, and it's actually great for the pre-writing stage as well as even beyond that. So, sorry, it's going to load here. Um, writeabout.com is meant to be um, a one-stop place for the pre-writing stage all through the writing process, and students can register for free. As a matter of fact, I recommend the teacher registers for free first. And there is a pricing scheme, um, just to be completely transparent here, but you can see that there is no cost with a lot of, of the features, and there is a low-cost classroom version if this is something you want to consider growing into in the future. Um, to, to really see how this works, how this Write About platform works, I'll actually play their introductory video, which is on their website here. Say hello to Write About, a social publishing platform created by educators who believe that writing should be fun and sharing should be easy. That's why this new platform begins with hundreds of visually stunning, high-interest writing ideas, the toolkit for teachers to create their own. Simply click on an idea and start your write about or create ideas into personalized galleries. Our simple interface is designed with the entire writing process in mind, allowing students to write a post, record audio, and publish to groups. Teachers can intuitively keep up with their progress, and providing feedback has never been easier. With in-text annotation and private feedback in both text and audio format, students get the specific support they need. The social aspect of WriteAbout creates real student excitement, while teachers moderate and model positive writing communities through custom groups that connect students with their classes, projects, and unique interests. So, what will your students write about? If anyone is interested in the Write About platform and trying it out, contact me, kdadsu8.org. Um, I do know the, the, the website developer, and I, he's wanting to look for pilot classrooms to try out some of those um, paid features um, for free for, in exchange for feedback on what works in the classroom. So um, just something to think about, and even if you aren't interested in this website, writeabout.com, there's plenty of other tools that allow for all those little pieces, and this is, is in my mind, is just more of a one-stop shop. So let's talk, take a look at some other of those smaller pieces. When we're doing pre-writing, no writing classroom can go without graphic organizers and um, the ability for students to organize their ideas visually in addition to um, in their heads and linearly in the form of an outline. So these are just a few ideas or a few apps that I've used most often in, in my English language arts classroom. The first one is called a Venn Diagram. Now the nice thing about this one and many others like it is that it comes from readwritethink.org and they have both a web version and an app version. So no matter if you're on Chromebooks, laptops, or um, iPads, uh, you can usually access their materials. This interactive is just a very simple Venn diagram. You're able to put your circles onto your workspace, your topics inside of them, and then organize your ideas from within that. Similar to Venn diagram is T-Chart. And sometimes the apps that do the least are sometimes the best in my mind because they just focus on one one specific thing or skill and this one is that t-chart and how often do we use the t-chart for 
idea generation or organization with students. And this one can be done in, in within the iPad, basically. You can have your pros and your cons or your pluses and your minuses. Um, your, your prompt or your question at the top can be dependent on the writing activity. And then all of the ideas that students list and generate in that T-Chart app can be printed off or just referenced later on in the writing process. This next app is probably my favorite idea mapper or concept organizer um, app. They do have a free version of Poplet, but it only allows you to create one of these popples, which is what they call their concept maps. Um, if you pay for the $4.99 version, you have unlimited, and um, this is available on volume purchasing, so you can get them for half price if you get them for a classroom set. In the Poplet app, they also have, I'm sorry, a web version now, um, which, which also has a, a free part and a paid version to it, but it allows students to access their idea webs on, on the website as well as within the app. So the nice thing about this is that inside of each idea bubble, you can put images, text, you can also insert websites, you can also put in doodles that you do with your finger or with uh, the, the trackpad I'm using a drawing tool. And so you can create these um, in-depth bubbles that allow you to tap on them and then go deeper as well. There's the export button in the upper right hand corner that allows you to take it out of the app and use it in other places. And it's just a great um, graphic mapping app. This is another free version though, not as developed or familiar maybe as Poplet, but it is completely free and it's called iBrainstorm. And you can see inside of the bubbles, you can still put these little virtual post-it notes or sticky notes with typed text. It looks like there's some stickers and then the ability to hand draw arrows and symbols and um, annotations on top of your idea map. Idea Mint used to be called Idea Sketch, and I like this app, still entirely free, because the connectors, you can see the arrows here that students use to join together ideas, they're actually, they actually serve a purpose. So they are more than just um, illustrations, they actually show how ideas are related. And um, you'll notice in the bottom right hand corner of the screenshot, that there is the ability to turn the idea map into an outline. So you can flip flop back and forth between views, much like we used to in Inspiration when we use that software on the laptops. And that's all within this free app idea mint. So there are many, many more ideas for the pre-writing stage. I am just scratching the surface and if, um, that stage of the writing process isn't one where you feel technology has the most benefit, you may consider incorporating it in the drafting stage, in the second stage of the writing process. Um, this is typically where we tend to think of students using paper and pencil, and, and, and again, that's completely fine. But if you allow for students to have access to technology, um, you can find a lot of benefit. For one, some students can write without worry easier when they are word processing. If we are using it in the drafting stage, though, I recommend a note-taking app, maybe Notability. It's one of the leaders as far as note-taking. It is a paid app, however, um, but you can buy it for both iOS platform or for Mac, and they'll, they'll sync. The, the capabilities of Notability include digital drawings and annotations like you see on the screenshot, images, photographs that you can incorporate into your notes, as well as typed text. And probably my favorite feature, you can see in the menu bar, there's a microphone icon that allows you to add audio notes as well. All of your notes and notability are saved in notebooks, which can be organized by subjects in school or topics that your students are working on as far as writing or whatever it might be. It's a great platform, um, highly, highly recommended in the App Store and also available on volume purchasing. 
A free alternative, however, is Evernote. And probably a, even another strength of Evernote is its compatibility across all platforms. So if students go and get a free Evernote account, they can access their notes and notebooks both on um, iPod Touch, on iPad, on laptop, on any device, on a smartphone, and they all sync between all of them. They're just tied in the cloud to the user account. And the organization, again, within notebooks is some, a skill that's great for students and works well, lends itself well to um, writing. For students to use as a word processor, there really is no um, reason to say that they can only have one option, but rather letting them have choice in whether they work within Word, Google Docs, or Pages. Um, there's benefits of all and features of all that we can take advantage of in the drafting stage. Um, for example, Pages, which has both a Mac app and an iOS app, um, you are you do students have the ability to save automatically. They don't even have to remember to save. They still need to remember to save, but if they forget, versions and drafts will be automatically saved and synced through iCloud. They also can revert back to uh, previous versions of drafts within um, or of documents within pages. Um, it'll revert back under the file menu file revert to. Um, or browse previous versions. It'll let them see all the times they've hit that save button along the way. Um, this has helped many a student out of a bind when they don't know what they did or wanted to prove that they had something in the past. It will retrieve it for them. So that's a nice feature. You also have the voice dictation um, that's built into the platform, the Pages platform, and you can pull it up right under the ed edit menu and you can start dictation right from within pages. That is on both page, on both iPad and on Mac. So um, definitely um, benefits of using pages. It also has a visual interface for students to drag and drop images to enhance their writing um, documents. Google Docs is probably um, becoming more and more used, utilized in the classroom because of our Google domains that our schools have access to. Students can not only do everything we, we earlier mentioned in pages, but they can also collaborate with others. So the ability to have multiple authors on one document is definitely a benefit to Google Docs. One feature that's fairly new to Google Docs is the voice typing. And if you are using the Chrome browser, you do have to be in Chrome for this to work. When you start any Google Doc, you can go to the Tools menu and pull down to Voice Typing. As long as you're connected to the internet, you have a little microphone icon you can click and then talk into your computer and it will play, um, it will, it'll generate the text that you are dictating. So as English teachers or even any kind of a teacher, we might be saying, well, what is the student learning if the computer is doing it for them? I, I want us all to consider the other side of that and how voice dictation or voice typing can actually, um, make learning more accessible and help students out with parts of the writing process to allow them to grow in others even more deeply. And to kind of show you an example of that, I have a story from a student, not one of mine, from a friend from um, another state. This is Caitlin. And in this school that Caitlin goes to, 100% of the students have a learning disability of some sort. And this is how her teacher used voice dictation to help develop Caitlin's writing. And I'll let you watch this to see how it works. We started writing in journals and I wasn't that good at spelling. So I would write in my journals, but then the next day, I could not read them. And then we got iPads, and there was this app called Pages, and Siri helped me write my journals. Here's an example. Legend of Hero Brian. Once 
I was done with Syrian pages, I wrote it down in my journal. And I just copied what it said. And I started writing my journals better so I could read them the next day. I like this ingenious use of Siri or voice dictation because it's not what I was typically thinking. It was kind of the opposite, using the digital to reinforce the analog, however you choose to use it. Um, technology can help enhance students' writing abilities. So let's switch now to the third stage of the writing process, revising. Once we have that first draft down, and um, students can truly then focus on content and making it better. This is where they're improving, but they're not just looking for the nitty gritty. They're looking at a high level or an aerial view, like I like to call it, um, adding, removing, moving, or substituting ideas and thoughts. And technology definitely comes into play in this stage. One app that might come in handy is one called Lists for Writers. This is another example of a paid app where you could even benefit from just one copy of the app on one device simply to go and find those synonyms or replace overused ideas. The nice thing about this app is that everything is organized in lists for writers. So you'll see in the screenshot even how there are lists of character traits, of plot, of conflicts, of settings, absolutely anything you can imagine that you would ever need. Um, and in the revising stage, these lists can come in handy for students. Um, always the, the dictionary, the built-in dictionary with the thesaurus as well is available, um, but using a more developed app like this can create even deeper um, connections. And speech, speech selection is a fe an accessibility feature that is actually built in to the iOS. So if you have an iPad or an iPod touch device, you go into settings, general, and accessibility, turn speak selection on. And then it'll simply be a keystroke or a, a command that will, able, will enable the iPad to read aloud anything that, ha that has been typed or written on its screen. This is important during the revision stage because students need to listen back to what they wrote in their first draft. And if they are having the computer read it back to them, they'll hear things they assumed they wrote differently. Well, I thought I wrote that, but it'll come back and it'll actually not sound quite right. So a first requirement in, in my classroom for students when they're revising is simply to plug in their earbuds, and have the device read it back to them. If they were in pages on the Mac, they would go to the edit menu, go down to speech, and click start speaking. And until they tell it to stop, it'll read aloud to them everything that's typed in pages. If you're working in Chrome on a, um, another laptop or a Chromebook, you can in enable or install a free Chrome extension called Speak It, which will essentially do the same thing. Um, whatever text you have selected on your page, whether it's from a, um, a news website, news article, or a piece of text, it'll basically say that aloud to the student, and they could use that Chrome extension for their own revisions by listening back to what they wrote in their first draft and trying to think about how they could improve it. For peer reviewing during this uh, revising stage, it's important to use the commenting features <laughs> that are available in Pages, Word, or Google Docs, all three of them. You can insert a comment. It's as easy as usually under the Insert menu, and you get that digital sticky note that has the name of the person whose computer they're using and the um, pop-up bubble that 
unobtrusively give suggestions to the original author. It's worth noting also that within Google Docs, if you insert comments onto students' Google Docs, they actually get an email notification telling them that there is a comment um, that they need to address or see. It's not just like when you make changes to a Google Doc and um, this, you have to hope that the student or that the other person is going to revisit that Google Doc to know that you have put those changes there. When you insert it as a comment, they get an automatic notification in their email. Editing, stage four. Uh, probably student's least favorite stage. Uh, it's where we do the proofreading, the fine tuning, and we're on the ground level looking for those details that need to be fixed. So the dictionary mentioned earlier as well um, is super important now. Almost every um, device or piece of technology has either a built-in dictionary or the ability to access an online dictionary. You can see in the screenshot here that in Google Docs, if you come down from the Tools menu, you can not only define terms, but you can also open up this entire research sidebar that allows you to search for additional information on a topic, find additional sources to um, pull into your piece of writing, define words, use the thesaurus, all kinds of, uh, of great features within that sidebar. And that research sidebar will stay open and you can continue to utilize it once you um, open it up under the tools menu. If you're looking for external resources to enhance the editing stage, I do recommend um, Grammar Girl as a source. She has quick and dirty tips for better writing available as a free podcast. So within short little audio um, podcast segments, you can learn about different writing tips and different grammar rules. Um, and you can just sort through them. You can see there's hundreds, nearly 500 of them when I took the screenshot not too long ago. Um, and they're all free. You just download them and then play them in your classroom from iTunes or from whatever device um, is accessing that podcast feed. Um, Grammar Girl also puts out some paid resources. They, she has a, a writing guidebook, I guess, that is a paid version, but very good. And she has an, an app that actually teaches students grammar in the form of, of a game experience. Um, definitely worth the few dollars that it costs to be able to have students learn and practice grammar in a fun way. Now, if we're writing within Pages or Google Docs or Word, it doesn't matter. When we're doing revisions and editing both, it's a good idea to turn on track changes and teach students to do the same. So in Pages or Word, you, you turn on track changes, pages it's under the edit menu again. In Google Docs, they have a similar feature, it's just not called track changes. You go to the view menu, go down to mode, and then choose suggesting. Typically, we're in editing mode. We're used to visiting a Google Doc and being able to type right on it. But if the owner of the document, or even the person who's looking at the Google Doc, switches it to suggesting mode, now anything that's typed gets added to the screen as a suggestion with a sidebar and a, almost like a sticky note, a, a virtual post-it note that pulls off to the side and, and suggests to the author that they make that change but doesn't make it for them. As a teacher, this is powerful because students aren't just going to get their, their paper or their writing fixed or changed. They're going to have to actually think about the suggestions and then decide whether they accept or reject them. Um, and this is really a good way to practice revising peer revisions as well. So students, whether they um, actually switch devices or just switch chairs in the classroom, and each of them put their document into suggesting mode, and then the edits that are suggested have to be reviewed by the original author and decided whether they actually want those to be incorporated into their writing or not. We finally made it to the fifth stage of the writing process in publishing, and this is where we can truly incorporate technology to add that creativity, to infuse that life into our students' writing. Students can enhance, they can perfect, they can share with the world. 
this could be anything from uh, enhancing it with visuals or multimedia to just how to distribute it and how to share your final product. A lot of power in the publishing stage. And let's just take a look at a few simple ideas. Starting with Blogger, probably um, if I could tell you only one thing to do to improve students' writing, um, and, and only do one of all, all these suggestions, I would say start a blog. Have your students start a blog. You can start a class blog where students can become blogging contributors, or you can even start even simpler than that. Just start a blog and let students comment on your posts. Um, you can eventually evolve into each student having their own blog, which exists maybe as their portfolio. And that dialogue, that digital dialogue that happens on a blog is, is very powerful. It also shows them that the world is their audience. And when they get real feedback outside of the classroom, it means more and it impacts their writing than simply just hearing it from their teacher or from someone within the classroom. There are many different blogging platforms available for free and for education even. However, Blogger is the one that I've used the most, and that's simply because if schools have Google domains already, then kids already have access to, um, to Blogger. It's just part of the Google Apps. So you can see that a blog can be started on about any topic, and once they um, start that blog, then you can have multiple contributors to the blog. And if we view this blog as a... Um, live document so students can take turns entering about what we did that day keep that ongoing journal um, recapping the events and the learning and then on the sidebar here you'll see how each student has a link to their own individual blog so this serves more like that um, writing portfolio year long so that you can see authors notes or different writing projects that the kids created and then they keep track of them here um, hopefully kids could even add their own personal writing topics in between and develop that um, that brand, their, their personal blogging brand that shows them that their writing has a purpose and has connections to the outside world. And blogging is just a, a, a great skill to show real world connections to writing. And um, you can do so much with it even outside of English classes. It doesn't matter if you teach science, social studies, any, any subject area could benefit from writing and communicating via the blog, blogger platform. Another way of sharing students' writing is an online poster site called Samore. And basically you develop a flyer, and that flyer has the students' writing on it, also enhanced with images or videos. And then they do get statistics and real-time stats about who's viewing it and where. Adobe Slate is very similar. There's a free app for iOS or you can visit slate.adobe.com on, on the web, and you're able to add um, a digital story that scrolls down through it so that your writing can be enhanced with images and multimedia and graphics along the way. If you're working on the Mac platform, you should definitely take advantage of the free iBooks author software. This is about as near as you can get to professional publishing um, that we have access to um, in my mind. And of course, the final product is a digital book, an ebook, and it's a multi touch book. So it's not just text and images, but it's also widgets that students can create, um, interactive elements that go beyond just videos and, and, and text, or even pictures and text, but they're actually um, dependent on the user to interact with them iBooks Author can only be utilized on the Mac. It can't be accessed on iPad or another platform. But if you do have access to it, um, you can take advantage of it in so many ways. My students as junior high students, many of them became published authors in iTunes um, before they were old enough to even drive a car. Whether they wrote a book about a personal passion or hobby like showing sheep or doing gymnastics or working KBRX or even cleaning your room, um, or if they were writing stories about social studies, science topics, things that they learned about in other classes, they were authoring it, their own book and adding it to it way more than purely the text. In this example here, you'll see um, telling the story of a historical topic like Henry VIII through the point of, view of, point of view of a fictional character that they created to add that voice 
and then the interactivity with the um, other elements um, makes it a great writing experience for kids. Here's another one from Shane who wrote his story about Arbor Day, and the history of it. was able to add quiz widgets, um, audio buttons that use Shane's narration voice, um, interactive timeline where they can click on and get more information, etc. Or telling the story of photosynthesis, a science topic, through the point of view of a fictional plant character, adding the um, interest for younger readers, the vocabulary terms or key terms that would pop up definitions, and um, animations created by the student to add even more understanding to the content that they wrote about. Definitely real world, world publishing um, that can live on, on beyond their year in school and make them published authors. Now, if you don't have access to the Mac, never fear, because you can do something very similar with a paid app called Book Creator. Now, this is my favorite of the iPad publishing apps where you can create a book, an, a digital book, an e-book e um, from start to finish all on the iPad. And the reasons why I like Book Creator um, and why it's worth the $4.99 uh, or the trial version where you can make at least one full complete book and, and uh, to at least try it out. Um, the benefits are that, again, you can completely author your whole book on the iPad. You can add audio without having to go out and using another app to do so. So one of the buttons is just to add a narration, and students can bring their text that they wrote in typed text to life through their, um, their voice, too, through their audio, and then put it right on the page with that little speaker icon. You can also combine multiple pages or books from multiple authors. So if every student in your class wants to do a page or a section of the book, it's easy to combine them into one class book on your iPad. You can also export each book as an EPUB, obviously, um, to open up in iBooks, or you can even export it as a movie. So it'll just play back as a video that you could then put on YouTube or email to um, your audience and parents and people that wanted to watch it. So a lot of options for exporting. So that's just a few ways to publish and share students' great writing work. Um, there's even more to go along with this topic of writing instruction with digital tools. I just want to recommend a few key resources that I enjoy. This is a free book for iBooks called Revitalizing Writing with iPad. The link to it is in the uh, list of resources that I have added um, below this episode, below this Wednesday webinar. Um, but it's by Carrie Lee Beasley, and it has great tips and projects and lessons for the classroom. I also have a short list of English language arts resources from other Apple Distinguished Educators, um, some free courses and collections of materials that are all grouped together on this one set of resources. If you mostly work with the Google Docs platform, I recommend this resource from Eric Curtis. It's a 17-page PDF where you can get some ideas for improving writing with Google Docs. And it might even be updated because it is a living, breathing, breathing document online and it's available for free for anyone to access. This is another free resource. It's actually from professional writers. It's called Creative Writing Learning from the Masters. It's in the form of a digital book again for iBooks, um, but a lot about creative writing and elements of plot and lots of pages of background information to utilize for the classroom, the writing classroom. There's a whole collection of apps and resources on iTunes centered around writing and composition, and this link is also available in the show notes. But some final advice for all, whether you teach writing at any grade level or any subject area, how to get more out of student writing with technology. Um, start by crafting a collaborative community. Utilize that technology to add more community and more collaboration into your classroom. And rather than having writing happen in isolation, where it's one student who's writing for one person, the teacher um, typically, build that out and you'll add a lot of depth and, and, and deeper learning to your writing assignments. Add authentic audiences that goes along with it, but don't simply write for um, the classroom community or audience, but find a purpose, an external purpose to um, have review your work or write for younger students, or write for someone in the, the community, um, write for the newspaper, or write for something beyond the classroom to add authenticity to it. Leverage learning options, take advantage of different choices that students can, can make along the way. Um, don't 
require everyone to use the, utilize the same tool at the same time all the time. Definitely document, reflect, and share on your process and what works for you and what works for your students. Thanks for listening. Um, I know that that maybe took a little longer than a typical webinar, but if you're interested in any more um, explanation or a deeper look into any of the apps that were mentioned today, I'd be happy to share it with you anytime. Email me and um, keep trying to encourage writing with our students and using the digital tools to do so. And I think it will show its value, um, hopefully, multiple times forward. Thanks so much.